Okay, yeah, uh, welcome everybody. So today we are excited to have Arun Ram from University of Melbourne speaking about generalized divided differences and Monk's rule. Uh, please go ahead, Arun. Great, thank you, Anders. Thanks to all of you for inviting me and having me speak. It's really a pleasure to get to tell these stories. I was telling Leonardo, it's just such a beautiful theory. I feel lucky to work in this in the subject. So I wanted to talk about this um, paper with Tom Halverson that we wrote um, last year. And so um, it's about monk rules for McDonald polynomials. Really, my focus recently has been McDonald polynomials, but of course the the Schubert analogies are just everywhere. So that's how I want to start is with the analogies to Schubert calculus. And so let me begin just with divided differences. So, of course, symmetric group. Sn for me is a symmetric group, and that acts on um, polynomials. And I'll use Laurent polynomials because that's where the McDonald polynomials live. And that's, of course, so let me, I'm going to write many operators. And so I want to write them sort of in a consistent form, uh, which is that I've got Si acting on the operator F. And then that is going to be equal to, so I take F, I leave the first I minus one variables fixed. I switch I plus one and I, and then I leave the remainder of the variables fixed. All right, so that's the standard symmetric group action. Of course, in this, oh, everybody went black, okay. Um, super, so then, uh, uh, the divided differences. Let's let um, del i be one plus s i applied to one minus x uh, x i minus x i plus one. So that's my standard divided difference, and then we immediately start to compute relations. So del i squared is zero, and these satisfy Coxeter relations. Plus one, del i, del i plus one. And then of course the next one is uh, di. So di is one plus si, times one over one minus xi inverse xi plus one. So I view it as an operator on polynomials. And then um, di squared is di uh, Sorry, can I ask right, so somebody, either Anders or Leonardo or somebody to Go back on camera because other it's somehow it's very yes, yes. <laughs> it okay. feels okay. very Come funny to, to be talking black. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks. Um, all right, so the DIs they satisfy um, again the same braid relation, but we have this this square relation has changed to the from from the from being a nilpotent operator to being an idempotent operator. Okay, so now the fun starts um, because I'm gonna let t to the half be some complex number. Um, I view that as just a, an extra parameter. And then we let CSI be this operator, t to the minus a half minus t to the half xi inverse xi plus one divided by one minus xi inverse xi plus one. So, so you can see that same kernel is appearing in these factors, but this thing, this whole expression is called the C function. So actually Laura Colmenarejo and I wrote a whole paper about how the C functions are just sort of integral part of the 
the game here. So when I take this as my push-pull operator, then it squares almost idempotent, but with a constant. So t to the half plus t to the minus a half um, times CSI. And if you look at the braid relation, CSI, CSI plus one, CSI, and you want that to be equal to CSI plus one, CSI, CSI plus one, it's not. It, it, it's just not, doesn't satisfy the same relation. So you have to fix it by adding right. a CSI, yeah? Uh, your CSI seems to be a constant. I don't see it, it does, has no SI in it. Oh, I'm so, sorry. Thank you. Thank you, of course. Wonderful. So I can blame the time difference that I'm I'm still asleep. But <laughs> thank you, Alan. That's great. So it's I want it to be the same kind of operator um, where you take some some uh, Todd class and then you symmetrize it. And I'm doing the same thing here, taking some kind of a class and symmetrizing it. That's my CSI. So yes, thank you. Okay, so I have to add. To get the re the relation correct, I have to add here a um, CSI plus one to the left hand side and a CSI to the right hand side, but then it works again. And you just have to build that into your relations. Of course, you can fix it. So if I let TI be CSI minus T minus a half, then what happens is, well, it satisfies my usual Hecke relation, which is t to the half minus t to the half minus a half ti plus one. So, and the usual braid relation. So ti plus one, ti, ti plus one is equal to ti, ti plus one, ti. And that's my Hecke algebra. So, so we can, this is standard heck yeah. Okay, great. So far so good? Okay, so now I want to move to Daha. Daha is the, the double affine heck algebra and it's action all in advance. So for that, I need, um, Another parameter, so Q, um, which is also non-zero complex number, you can take it to be that, or you can take it to be a free parameter, it's also fine. And then I have an operator YI, which acts on a polynomial, a Laurent polynomial, and it gives you back, so you take the old polynomial, you leave the first i minus one coordinates the same, and you scale the ith coordinate by q inverse, and then you leave the rest of the coordinates the same. So that's yi. And using yi, we can build t pi, which is s1 up to sn minus one. So those are my operators just symmetric group times yn. So that's a new operator that we're introducing and we use it to define capital Y, which, so these are some kind of Murphy-like, if you know Murphy elements in the symmetric group, they're Murphy elements of the Daha. And this is T pi times T n minus one down to T one. So I have y, y1. That's the first Murphy element. And you get the others, y, yi, so for i between two and n, you, you get the others by taking ti minus one inverse, the previous yi, yi minus one, ti minus one inverse. All right, so I have, um, so amazing fact is that that yi yj is yj 
YI, um, just, just like Murphy elements satisfy. Um, but the, you can just view them as operators on polynomials and, and try to check, do the exercise that the YIs commute. Okay, so now we can really get to the generalized divided differences um, that we use to build McDonald polynomials. So these are called tau i check, or at least I call them tau i check. And I, I suppose I should apologize for all the checks which, which litter this thing. But if you're trying to keep Langland's duality straight in your head, you have to have them. So, and tau i check is going to be CSI minus t to the half minus t to the minus a half y i inverse y i plus one divided by one minus y i inverse y i plus one. Ernie, so I, yeah. On the bottom of your previous page, you've got t pi is equal to something that doesn't mention pi. Is that right? t pi is just a notation for a new generator, yeah. Okay, so pi is not a permutation? Pi is not a permutation, no. Okay. No, so. Okay. I mean, secretly, it is an affine permutation, but since I haven't brought in the affine vial group, you don't see that in this. Right, right now, it's just an operator for me, sitting on the polynomials. Yeah. So, so this tau i is sort of trying to be CSI, but it's got another correction in these new variable, these new operators y i, and it's really an amazing thing in my opinion. It's, it's called the Cherednik intertwiner because um, that's what he used it for. Okay, so I need then now one more set of operators. So, but these are very easy. So capital X J is just going to be multiplying by X J. So. So if I act on a polynomial, then that's just little xj times f x1 up to xn. So, but it's important to start thinking about these x's as operators on the polynomial. And then I'm gonna need one more, uh, one more intertwiner, which is called tau pi check. And that's going to be x1, t1, up to tn minus 1. So, so maybe let's copy this one. The, these are my key operators here. Um, so that we, we've got them. All right, so that these are that's the whole daha. I've got the daha action secretly without telling you what daha is. I've just defined all the operators on on um, the polynomial ring, and now we can start to think about Schubert and McDonald in the analogies. So let me go back to the Schubert case first. So Schubert. So the, the standard way to do it is to talk about Schubert polynomials, which are these curly S, mathfrak SWs, and they're indexed by permutations in S infinity. So, so permutations that are, that can be as wide as they like, but are secretly finite permutations. So permute, they permute the integers, one through whatever. And these form a basis, a basis of polynomials. So this is the Schubert story using an infinite number of variables. And the way we want to define them is we want to, for each permutation, if uh, wi is bigger than wi plus one, then I want this original divided difference acting on sw to be sw si. 
And then you need some normalization. So the S of the top class. So the W not N for me is the smallest element in the symmetric group SN. And that's X1, X1 to the N minus one, X2 to the N minus two, X N minus two to the two, X N minus one, right? So that's, that's my standard definition of Schubert polynomials. And the point is I want to do the McDonald story in an analogy to that. So, so McDonald uh, polynomials. So these are going to be denoted E mu, the McDonald polynomials. These are what I call electronic McDonald polynomials, or non-symmetric McDonald polynomials. And they're indexed by n tuples of integers. And they form a basis, a basis of the ring of Laurent polynomials in n variables now. So I'm working x1 plus minus 1 up to xn plus minus 1. So that's my first analogy, is that the Schubert polynomials form a basis of the polynomial ring with in infinitely many variables. These guys form a basis of the polynomial ring in n variables, but Laurent polynomials. And then I want to construct them. So I'll take and I'll say that if, so an n tuple of integers is mu one up to mu n, and if the ith component of my n tuple is bigger than the i plus first component, then um, tau i check. So, so that's my fancy divided difference, generalized divided difference. When I act on e mu, should give me e s i mu. So the same way as for, and the, the way that I do it, I normalize this by a half because I, I try to follow Cherednik's notations. And then for two, we have to, again, fix some normalization of the bottom class or the top class, depending on your point of view. So the zero partition or the zero composition is one, going to be one. And then these extra operators, so, so maybe maybe I can grab this um, Schubert story for. So the extra operators for, for the McDonald case are this tau pi. And tau pi, when it acts on e mu, it's going to give me e pi mu, where pi mu acts on a sequence. And what it does is it cycles this around. So I get mu n plus one, mu one up to mu n minus one. Is that readable? I hope so. So, so what's happened is that the mu n has moved to the beginning, but when it moved to the beginning, it got augmented by one. It got an extra, an extra box, if I'm thinking in terms of partitions and boxes, that, and all the other guys moved, just moved over. So it's a cycle, but with an augmentation to it. And that's um, how the T pi acts on the McDonald polynomials. There is an extra factor, if I'm being careful with the contents, um, which is, so stuff is equal to one half N minus one minus the number of I's such that mu I is greater than mu I plus one. So the, 
there's a lot of these little normalizations in McDonald polynomials and they're annoying, but they're not complicated. They're, they're all combinatorial and they're all, so, so this is one of them. So the, the tau pi cycles around. And for me, in, if I'm constructing McDonald polynomials, this is a very important operator because I have to start with zero, zero, which is no boxes. And somehow I have to add boxes to get big partitions or, or big compositions. And so it's this tau pi operator that allows me to do that. And then the last, uh, the last important step in McDonald polynomials is the action of the yi's. And the action of the yi's is that the, the emus, the electronic McDonald polynomials are eigenvectors for the yi's. So the yi's are called Dreadnick Dunkel operator. And the eigenvalue is q to the minus mu i t to the negative v mu of i minus one plus one half times n minus one. So v mu is a permutation and it is permutation so is minimal length uh, such that, so I want to take mu and I want to sort it. So I want this to be weakly increasing. And that permutation that takes your composition, sorts it into uh, increasing order, is, is the one that, that's appearing in these weights. And that always appears in McDonald polynomial T, the T weights of McDonald polynomial. The Qs somehow keep track of the parts of the composition and the Ts are always keeping track of this minimal length sorting permutation. But th this is the, the amazing property is that you've got a whole bunch of uh, commuting operators that diagonalize on the basis of electronic McDonald polynomials. All right, so that's uh, the, the definition of all the McDonald polynomials. How do we go? That's 25 minutes. Shall we break there? So, yeah. Yes, uh, that works. Uh, that works good. Um, <laughs> So I guess that, that means we start again at five.